In October 1846, here in the Massachusetts General Hospital Ether Dome, medical history was made when surgeons successfully demonstrated the first public surgery using an anesthetic, ether. This procedure marked a major turning point in medicine. Today, we are on the trail of discovery again, this time to beat cancer. Research of great magnitude with implications for all of us is happening here at Mass General, throughout Boston, and around the world. I'm committed to this fight myself because my family has experienced the turmoil of cancer diagnosis too, my wife Wendy. This is a look at how creative thinkers and compassionate caregivers are utilizing ever-improving technologies to speed our understanding of cancer like never before. Just a short walk from the Mass General stands the Eli and Edith L. Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, where some of the world's brightest scientists and mathematicians are dedicated to understanding the molecular basis of human physiology and disease through genomics. Heading the charge is the Broad Institute's founding director, Dr. Eric Lander. It's an incredible time in biomedicine today. It blows my mind to think that things that would have cost us billions of dollars, the Human Genome Project cost $3 billion, we can now do that for an individual tumor for a couple thousand dollars. If you bring together a whole team of people, people who know how to do that kind of sequencing technology, clinicians, basic biologists, chemists, and they're saying, Cancer's complicated, but not infinitely complicated. We can get a full roadmap for what's wrong in cancers, where to hit a cancer, how it might escape, and what combination of things you might hit it with. That's the plan. The reason why young people across the entire Boston area come together now in teams is because they see a way that we're going to be able to accomplish something together that nobody could do alone, and that no previous generation could imagine doing. One of these young team leaders is Dr. Gaddy Getz, a pioneer in the growing field of bioinformatics and computational biology. With a joint appointment at the Broad Institute and the Mass General Cancer Center. Director of Bioinformatics. Yeah. In simple terms, tell us what you do. Bioinformatics is the field of analyzing biological data using computers. Eric Lander and I worked for years now on developing these algorithms that distinguish genes that carry driver mutations, those that drive cancers, from genes that carry mutations that are not important for cancer. These are called passengers. How deep does this search go? So it could go very deep. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. I was going to ask you if that was the illusion, because obviously with traditional technology of the past, would have been impossible, but the technology is catching up? Absolutely. Actually, the technology of sequencing is the most advancing technology that, that we know of. In this recent paper, we analyzed 5,000 tumors for 21 different tumor types. We found in one study essentially everything that was found in the last 35 years, and we actually added 33 new cancer genes, which is roughly 20% more than what was known before. Now we want to go to the next step. The pace set by computational biology is nearly impossible to match in clinical and traditional research settings. But genomic discoveries are providing shortcuts to the development of drug compounds that block cancer pathways. These compounds must then undergo testing in lab studies before they can be applied against mutations in a patient's tumor. This fast-moving process requires financial resources and increasingly relies on philanthropy. A 2014 100 honoree Longevity Foundation is one organization making a difference by funding researchers and physician scientists, like Dr. Rebecca Heist, one of my wife's physicians during her long, hard-fought battle with cancer. Longevity is being honored tonight. It's a great organization, and it's raised a ton of money. And it's nice to know where that money is going and how it's helping you do your job. So give us a, a brief overview as to the kind of work you're doing thanks to Longevity. Their mission and their vision um, is to see a world where no one dies of lung cancer. And that's an amazing goal to have, a wonderful goal. Um, and they really um, uh, make that happen with accelerating research and uh, supporting a lot of research around the country. And so the research is really trying to look at people's tumors very deeply and try to find new targets, um, new genes that are altered that's making the cancer grow and, um, and proliferate. Based on what we're doing now with this cycle that we're talking about and the targeted therapy and the search for mutations, mm -hmm. um, should people who have 
friends and relatives who are dealing with cancer be more hopeful now because of where we are right now? Oh, absolutely. There's been so many advances uh, in cancer in general and lung cancer in particular. Um, every six months, every year, there's something new. Um, and uh, for every patient, you know, what you want is for every therapy to give them as much time as possible, as good time as possible, uh, so that they can get on to the next discovery because they're coming and they're coming every day. Before promising new drugs are widely available, physician scientists need to conduct clinical trials to test these therapies for patients with cancer. The Henry and Belinda Tremere Center for Targeted Therapies is at the frontier of personalized cancer care, where doctors like Dan Urich lead patients on this path to new therapies. We hear a lot of terms. Maybe you could just explain what a phase one trial means. So phase one studies over the past several years have morphed, have transformed itself to become the first or early part of drug development where you're starting with, with the new drug and taking it to a very important time in the development, a drug called proof of concept, the point where you feel this is it. Actually, this drug can be given safely, and it actually works. So Barbara, what we're looking actually is this area here. This is how it looked before, and look how dramatically different this is. This spot here almost completely disappeared, and this spot is much less bright. So this is really good news. It's a very early scan, so we have to be cautious, but we can celebrate a little bit, it's fine. <laughs> so we'll keep treating you for another month. I think to give the patient uh, a real human being with family, with life, with dreams, with ideas, with a million ways how they can contribute um, to this world, to give them that time and more importantly to give them to open up that horizon um, this is what we all want. A little less than a year ago, I lost my wife and lifelong partner, Wendy, to this awful disease. Our fight with cancer was incredibly difficult. During that time, I learned a lot about the character, compassion, and deep commitment of an enormous team that was working on our behalf, directly and indirectly, physicians, nurses, and social workers at her bedside, and others working tirelessly in the wings to discover something that might have saved Wendy's life. Looking back, I feel gratitude for the life I had with Wendy and our kids. I'm grateful that we live in a city, a country, and a world where collaboration is prized and where we each can contribute as caregivers, researchers, advocates, volunteers, or philanthropists. Because after all, we're all in this together.